Welcome to Reverse Sweep's preview show presented by USAA Insurance. Pac-Man, Enable, we are getting into the latter half of stage four. We are getting very close to our first land of the year. <sighs> so how hopeful are you for some of these teams? We're going to get into the nitty gritties for a second, but are there any teams that stick out to you that you, you have faith can maybe make something happen this week? <sighs> this week going forward, I'm going to have to... My most hopeful team would be Dallas. I think it's the only hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like of, of the teams that we don't already have as contenders, I think mm -hmm. Dallas is the one that that sticks out the most to me. Uh, if we're already considering Optic in Florida, then um, Dallas has to be the one. Dallas is the one with the most potential and the most talent by far of the teams that aren't that aren't there yet. So that's where I would lean for sure. Well, let's take a look at some of those fixtures then. Uh, take a look day one. Uh, Godspeed to Gorillas in Seattle. They'll be facing off against Toronto and Optic. Uh, the likes of Thieves against Minnesota. New York, perhaps an easy run with London. But Dallas, that team that Pac-Man just mentioned, will play Florida. So I'm actually very excited for that series. And then day four closes out with matchups, big matchups like Toronto and New York subliners. And then Thieves and Optic, our final match of the week. So... All of these teams, uh, there's certain teams like, say, FaZe that you know they're guaranteed to get into their winner's start. So looking at Group A, guys, who starts in loser's bracket after this week? Who do you think is going to be ending up in loser's bracket? And if you're not sure, some of the rundown, Group A, you got FaZe, Optic, Minnesota, Thieves, Paris, and Seattle. So what do you guys think? Who is going to end up in losers? Paris and Seattle are given. Right. They're, they're we can given. agree to that for sure. And it's going to be tough because it's going to come down to Minnesota or LA Thieves, in my opinion. They play each other. They both have tough matches besides going up against each other. I believe uh, Minnesota plays FaZe and LAT, right? Yes. And, mm -hmm. and LAT, <laughs> they play... Oh, wow. Ooh, this is gonna Minnesota, be yeah, Minnesota and, and Optic. Yeah, and Optic, Optic guys. yeah. So it's like you got to think right now, both of those teams are going to lose to the other other match that they have this week mm -hmm. um, if we're being realistic. So it's really going to come down to who can win that matchup. Neither team looks good, in my opinion. Um, I'm sure John will probably lean towards Minnesota here. But I got to have hope. Or LAT. I I don't even care if they win around eleven. Game five. They gotta go one and one. They gotta start winners. Cause if this team does start in losers, I'm worried, Katie. I, I really am. I'm, I'll be worried. I'll be worried if they're third if they're in winners anyways, but I'll be yeah. they'll be the they'll be the third spot. And at least they can New York lose or once. Toronto, right? <laughs> But at least they yeah. have, yeah, at yeah. least they have two no, opportunities. Yeah, yeah. They'll be playing New York or Toronto. Yeah, they got way. at least a buffer in that case. Most likely. Right, my thing is here, so LA Thieves plays Optic, who I think they'll lose to, but they could beat. And then they play the Rocker. The problem is, so you thought I would lean towards the Rocker. The Rocker play FaZe, who I know they're going to lose to. And, yeah, it's a good and LA Thieves. So that like kind of gives me like a, a weird buffer where I have to kind of lean towards LA Thieves being the team that makes winners. So Rocker being losers, but that doesn't truly mean I really believe in LA Thieves. Both these teams, like Ian said, are pretty average at the moment, if you want to say that. Like maybe even below. Between those two in the matchup, it's so hard to say because I feel like if LA Thieves actually plays to their potential that they have with this roster, they'll win. But if they both play their median match, just their most average match, I feel like that edge has to go to Minnesota. And I mean, it's just a super tough spot. I mean, we could both be wrong and Optic lose all their matches and end up in losers. But I just feel like because Optic plays Surge and they're guaranteed to have that third win under their belt, I'm not sure how the tiebreakers will go, but I just feel like that puts them in a a spot to be in the winners. I have to lean towards Minnesota, uh, towards Minnesota going to losers just because they play phase and that's by far the toughest matchup in this whole thing but either way the winner of it is is down is about is bound to play new york or toronto and both those teams will beat them in winners round one they're basically so both just, in losers no matter what it, yeah they're both they're both bound to be in the losers bracket early 
All right. Well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I think when you when you look at these groups, it's there's not as much to say about group A, right? It's like pretty, it's, it really, as you said, kind of just comes down to like, well, Thieves Optic and kind of how those matchups play out because you know what's going to happen with teams like Paris and Seattle. So I want to talk then about group B because group B, you have teams like Dallas trending up, teams like Florida trending up, like sometimes glimmers of something at least from London in their ability to at least maybe try and make things mixy. So group B, Let's start with the top. Who do you think in Group B by the end of this week is going to be starting in winners? I mean, I have to go with New York, Toronto, and Florida. I believe those are the teams ahead right now. So it'll stay. And I, I do believe that. And I think Florida has a really big win against Toronto. So yeah, assuming there's a tiebreaker situation, that's huge for them. Um, and who does Dallas play? They play Florida. They just play Florida. That's that's huge, I guess. So that could that could have huge implications. I just really believe in Florida at this point. I think they're a really good team, and those are the three teams I would have going through. I'll tell you what. I think things can get interesting, Katie, because you have you have New are York. Are you about to do the Ian math? The, I, like, all the wild things that have to happen? That's it's what I've been doing. Break I, it I, down. Yeah, I was so... Toronto <laughs> plays LAG. That will be a win Dub. for Toronto. But they play NYSL. Uh, a series that NYSL could easily win, which would then... So the winner play. of that is in first place. Yes. If NYSL wins, that means Toronto would be sitting at three and two. Florida and Empire play each other. If oh, Empire facts. can win that, Ooh. they'll be sitting at three and two. Florida will be sitting at three and two. Toronto will be and sitting at three and two. It'll be a three-way tie. Uh, and then it goes down to what, Matt? It's Matt. The right? map count. Yeah. So who... But so the thing is, I know Toronto lost to Florida three to two. What was the good. score between? That's good for them. Yes, that's a good loss. What was the score between Toronto and Dallas? Three zero oh, Toronto. See, that's horrible. So Dallas has to win there because yeah. I mean, or three zero oh, Florida. Now, I know I'm a mastermind when it comes to this. I need a little bit more time thinking on it because realistically. I do think Florida will win the matchup with Empire. Even though Empire looked really good, um, mm -hmm. I can't I can't find any any sort of reason to give Empire the advantage. Um, I think Florida is trending up at a very fast pace. So I have NYSL, Florida, and Toronto, yes, uh, in, in my top three starting in winner's bracket. But if you give me 30 more seconds, I don't know. It might, it might change. I don't know. Go ahead. Think of, I also have, to add to this, I have Toronto beating, I, which lesser lesser team? That sounds horrible. I don't mean to say that. <laughs> which uh, uh, bottom team in the group do they play? Whichever one it is, I have them beating them. And I actually have them beating New York in their match Ooh. to be first in the group. Okay. So I don't know if that would affect, I don't think that would affect the tiebreaker situation. But if they were to do that, they'd Check both be out. four and one. And then that might change the tiebreaker between Florida and Dallas. Because then if they're both four and one, they're first and second. And then that would leave Florida and Dallas. They could both end up three and two, right? Yeah, they would just be head to head. Yeah, they both oh, would be but, head to head. So Empire. Dallas could so if so if Toronto beat New yeah. York, Dallas could just need to win against win against Florida today or next week and there you go they're in winners Ooh, so some crazy things could happen wow that's actually that's gonna be a good last week this is what because it was kind of boring this will be a good week yeah this will be a good week I decided by the way I think the top <laughs> three stays the same I think those are the, the three teams are winners so I love I love that Ian always comes up with some like wild theory and then backtracks at the end and goes like, ah, I'm going to go this safe around <laughs> at the end. Hey, but like, what I say last week, I bad. said Florida was going to be sitting at number one. They're close. They should be number one. Okay, you know, they let me okay. down. That's why I, you know, I got to be cautious because I can't ruin my rep as a mastermind, <laughs> you know. <laughs> These wild oh, takes are, you, gotta, you, gotta, you do got to be cautious. So I said LAG was going to win just because I was trying to be different. <laughs> yeah, they don't bite you in the ass, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, who knows? I mean, we do know, though, 
Uh, as Pac-Man said, guys, some very, very impactful matches that'll be coming up this week certainly could cause some crazy shifts in group B. Definitely a lot more than uh, group A. So we'll have to see what happens with them. A reminder, though, Reverse Sweep is presented by USAA Insurance. They make it easy to insure your stuff like your rigs and gear, and they have your back. Eligibility restrictions apply and insurance provided by the United Services Automobile Association and its affiliates in San Antonio, Texas. Now, let's get in to... The unsung heroes of the last week and what we can expect from them moving forward with Got You Covered, presented by USA Insurance. Level up your gear protection with USA Insurance. Now, anyone that stands out to you guys, someone that had a really great showing and, and you expect something good from them going forward, maybe, like we said, someone who uh, didn't get all the love they deserve, guys. Uh, enable, who comes to mind for you? Kind of an unsung hero from the week. For me? Mm. Unsung hero? Hmm. <laughs> I got to keep riding the wave that I'm currently on, no pun intended, but it's got to be Neptune for me. It, it has <laughs> to be. I think he has looked great again. You know, there was a real chance they could have been 4-0 in their group. Currently sitting at 3-1. and Have a really good opportunity to get top two, um, which would be huge for them moving forward. But he just he had a really good week last week, and I thought he played up to par um he wasn't like unbelievable but he was just consistent and i think he's only going to improve as he gets more comfortable learning call of duty uh, so it's, it's got to be him he's going to be the main reason behind florida really transforming into that top you know four tier and, and being a contender okay i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna go with crim six had he not had the worst game one that he's had in a while he would have had a, an overall tremendous series against uh, against New York. Now, he's been mm -hmm. a guy that people are saying has not been that great at this title. And if they're going to be the team that wins, if they're going to be the team that turns it around, he's going to have to play like he did towards the end of last season where he was the best player in their champs run to beat Baze. He needs to go back to that GOAT status. And I think that he showed flashes of it outside of the hard point loss in game in game one he just did not play well in that map but other than that he was their top damage guy the entire time the entire series outside of vivid and if it wasn't for that map he would have been the guy he was putting on actually he's actually taking over in spots and i think that he's getting comfortable with the new unit obviously he wasn't happy with the way they lost they obviously have kinks to work out but i saw flashes of the old crim six i saw flashes of the guy that can take over and i think that bodes well for dallas and I do believe that if they start winning, you're going to see a guy that people are saying is at the top of the AR totem pole. So I'm looking at Crim Six. How bad was his first map? Hard. Yeah, I don't I, actually. It was it really bad. Yeah, uh, he went like he had like a point six. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, looking he like, like pack six. up he there. Went he went double digit negative or something like that. I mean, he was still putting in the damage. Yeah, he just wasn't finishing yeah. anything. Something yeah. like that. But either way. Either way, even with the point six, he was putting in a lot of damage. So that means he's putting himself in a lot of spots to actually help out the team. And that's the most important thing. Okay, I like these. I think, uh, I wouldn't say he was, I wouldn't say he's unsung, but whatever. I'm going to go with Simp. And the reason I say this is because I'm looking forward, right? I wanna, I wanna see what he was doing. Something we've talked about is, Wow, when Simp's the guy who's the worst on your team, that says a lot about how good your team is. We've said that a few times throughout this stage, throughout last stage, that folks like RC stepping up, Celium, Abizi having a great run of it. And you're so used to people talking about Simp all the time when it comes to that roster. So we had kind of those that resurgence of that moment with Simp in this week, how incredible he played. He had like a 39 and 19 map, whatever else. We saw a nine spree when he's running circles around people. I'm looking forward to seeing that simp with the rest of the team in this upcoming week. So unsung, no, he gets a lot of love, but I'm very excited to see if simp suddenly hits that level as well. Uh, I'm very just, I'm very excited to see the entirety of that roster. Can they get even better than they already are? So that's my one, at least to watch going forward. Uh, but let's do bold predictions. Mine have been horrible of late. Your guys have uh, actually been pretty damn good. So bold prediction, guys. I want them to be extra spicy. This is the last week before our first LAN. 
of the year. I want them to be extra spicy. All right, that's where we get set up. So <laughs> this is where I thrive, you mean? This is where I thrive in the chaos. Nah, 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 nah. This is where you get set up. This is where you get set up. You want to go first? No, 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 because I need to. Uh, you got, you got it. I normally okay, go first. He's not thriving you need to that whip, one. You need to whip yeah. something up. Yeah, All right, whip, bold prediction. Bold prediction just for this week. Uh, is it that bold? Is it? Is it that bold to say that now that I'm thinking about it, I want to change my answer and say that I do feel Toronto is going to beat New York. That's not the bold part because they're just two top teams playing. But I do feel like Dallas is going to end up in that winner spot. I think I wanted to change my mind. I think I I believe in C6 and Shotzi. I do believe that those guys are nuts. And if their team is actually performing at a high level, they should be better than Florida. They're not performing at that level yet. Uh... But they should be. They should be better than Florida. So I'm gonna give it, give the edge to them, and I'm gonna have to go with Toronto beating Toronto and everyone else beating the lower teams, and then Toronto beating New York, and then Dallas beating Florida, and then eventually making that winners bracket and starting with that, starting in that spot and getting to play uh, possibly Optic in round one. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. All right, we have Pac-Man's a bold, the boldest of predictions. Ian, I want this to be good, but I'm warning you right now. You can't walk it back. There's no, there's no eh, at the end. Katie, you I'm stick a, I'm with a, whatever you're about to say. I'm going to walk it like I target. <laughs> 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 okay, here is my bold prediction. Right now in Group A, everyone thinks the top two are locked in, right, with Optic and Face. This week, Optic plays Seattle Surge, and they play LAT. Minnesota plays LAT, and they play FaZe. FaZe is beating the brakes off Minnesota, I'm sorry. So that means Minnesota is going to have to win the series against LAT to start winner's bracket. Unless Chicago Optic lose to Seattle Surge in the first match of the week, which I think is going to happen. It's going to be upset going to be one for the history books because Seattle Surge will not set the record for longest L streak in CDL history. I bet on Seattle a lot now. And you know what? Sam's let me down every single time. Sam has let me down. But I think Pristini's heart is what is going to be the difference maker in that series. Fuck you. So not only do I have Seattle winning a very close series first optic, I think LAT will also beat Optic, which would mean Optic go 0-2 on the week. They fall to an overall series uh, record of 2-3. and three. LAT goes 3-2. and two. Minnesota goes 2-3 and three as well, I believe. But Optic will stay in winners because Optic beat Minnesota. But they'll be third. So it'll be Phase, LAT, Optic Gaming, winners bracket. How's that? that for, uh, you know what? I asked for spicy and... I, you know, I do what I can. I do what I can. It's that the, I think telling people that Optic's going to lose to Seattle that's on a 10-match losing streak is pretty goddamn spicy. So, hey. Oh, I'm getting smoked. Them, them like five yeah. times in a row. So, like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's Optic spicy, is, though. I'm here Optic for it. Optic Seattle every single time they play. Hey, but Seattle's got Octane and Classic. Octane's on one, They've bro. They've had them for they a while. They didn't play Optic with Classic yet. No, that's true. So just add the 3-0 right. to Classic. Look, resume. she said spicy, okay? Who Before knows? all the Optic fans come to me, it's a slim chance. But I will say, the last <laughs> time that I, I swung for the fences, it hit. Okay? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. That That's spicy. And uh, this know. is you know not... What? Spicy. It's, it's, spicy. Yeah. it's, it's yeah, hey, not hey. mild. I'll tell you that. Spicy. It's not mild. No. No, uh, I, I'm i going to say, um, I'm going to go on a whim and say Gorillas are going to upset Toronto. And the only reason I say that is because Gorillas seem to just have this like magical ability to sometimes upset like the best teams. Like they just won't do anything. And then they just, that best team, it's like they find some extra fire or whatever it may be. And they get those upsets on teams that are. That's true. Trending Maybe. and significantly hey, better. Days. Well, mine yeah. was spicy. Yeah. Katie's is just batshit crazy. Ain't no shot well, in hey, hell. You know you know I would what? say that Katie's is less crazy than yours. Well, okay, but okay. hers is one step. Has a, uh, Katie's been 
super wrong this whole time, right? Absolutely. Just, okay, you didn't have to add just, that. Just not even close. close. Not yet. The not unsung close. hero is Simp. Like, this is guy's the most talked about guy in the CDL. Hey, hey, I clarified that. I literally started with that. Don't Listen, you slander me. I'm trying to have your back. I'm trying to have your back. Shut up. You don't sound like you're <laughs> having my back right now, man. <laughs> but Toronto does play NYSL in the biggest match of the week. So they could overlook LAG. That's fair. I think, yeah, they, they could. could pass it. They yeah. could. And LAG, to Katie's point, has beaten teams that are way out of their league for whatever the hell reason. So that does make sense. Okay. Your shit, on the other hand, makes no sense. You were swinging for defense, but you, you're you playing Little League. Like, you're using the... <laughs> you're swinging off the tee at yeah. Fenway trying to hit over the green monster. Katie did one thing. Hers was just LAG winning. That's basic arithmetic. I'm doing calculus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, had, fi math. I had five different I scenarios. Cut me some slack. <laughs> Five plus five is 11. I don't know, dude. All I can do is basic. I can't even do that. So you can do all your mental whatever juju. And Pac-Man, don't you say you were trying to defend me when you insulted me some time? Well, I mean... Pristini's heart, man. Pristini's heart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Look, his his eyes rather, after the series. He I would rather someone cares. give a shit. He love the game, be man. He love the game. And dip it. I'd rather someone at least look like they care. <laughs> But hey, if you just want someone to collect a bag and fuck off, then, you know, keep doing what they're doing. Anyway, anyway, to wrap things up, uh, do teams, are there any teams that you think coming off of this make make a change? Or do you think some teams are just going to chalk it too little too late? Depends on, I mean, obviously depends on what happens at, at the major. I don't think any teams are going to make a change before the major, if that's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just too late for that. But um, there are certain teams who are definitely not in position to chalk it, so... If LA Thieves continues in this direction, I do believe that they'll make a change before the major. Um, pretty much any team that actually has a competitive chance. LAG won't make a change. Seattle probably won't make a change. Paris won't make a change. London won't make a change. There's no reason for them to change. I mean, they're not going to make top eight anyways, so there's no reason to Is there a roster deadline, John? Do you know? I assume that it's it after, that it's, it's got to be... I mean, it's clearly before champs. My guess is... Well, actually, you know what? Last year... You know that God Rex was dropped right before champs last year? Yeah. He played every single match the entire Poor guy. season. Wait, and really? then right before they tramped, they dropped him for exceed. And oh, then they went and got the yo anyways. Uh, that is yeah, that is so that. wrong. And I hope because of that, they implemented something. Like, you should... I, if it was me, I don't know this is a rule, but if it was me, I believe that you should have to play the last stage at least. Yeah. But I'm not sure. So, I, I mean, it might be up to the team. Full um, discretion. For me, so he, here's the tough, the tough part, right? I a thousand percent don't think there will be any changes in the top eight teams currently, right? I think those will be the top eight teams that go to champs. So what that means Agreed. is you have a lot of meaningless matches, right? For mm -hmm. LAG, for London, for Paris, for Seattle. So there isn't necessarily a reason to make a team change because... Uh, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But if management were smart on some of these teams, I would maybe, I guess, uh, what is the Suedo is the word? It's like, I would do like a Suedo team change. Or Sudo. Sudo, Suedo, like yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> and maybe give some looks. I can't believe I've just butchered that that bad, but give some looks to challenger players, right? Because it's kind of like- post that. No, oh God. By the way, when when this goes up, please similar post that on similar to to what teams do in sports, right? When they know they don't have a chance at the playoffs, they let the young guys get some reps because you want to start see... some people out. Yeah, so I think that is a smart idea. But in terms of I guess team changes that would actually have some sort of effect, I don't see any of the top teams uh, making a change at all. I think the only teams that you could look at honestly would be in the six, seven, eight spot, which is LAT, Minnesota, Florida. Florida is playing really well lately. So not them, but maybe Minnesota or LAT, if they're not, if they keep me trending downwards, I could see mm -hmm. them maybe trying to make a change. Cause like they know that they're gonna be at champs, but they don't want to go and get dead last, you know? Um, yeah, true. And last thing I will say, I think if, if a team that will be at champs does make a change, I do not think it should be a one person change. Like if LAT or Minnesota or Florida, or I mean, at this point, anyone 
if they make a move, I think it needs to be because you're playing so bad, you do not have you any need to, sort you of need hope. To change it up. Yeah, you, where you just make, yeah. you, you're like, hey, we made it here. Let's just put random players together and see what happens. Like if I was LAT and they keep losing, honestly, I'd probably say, hey, Slasher, strap up. You're off the bench. Hoop, strap up. You're off the bench and let them run with TJ and Kenny. Honestly. Yeah. You know, the only one player change that I would actually consider would actually be Slasher for Major Maniac spot. If that's weird to say. Oh, if they could Just do cause... I was thinking about that, actually, when he yeah, was mentioning. Was... To... I was thinking about that, yeah. It still blows my mind that he's not going to be playing on I, land. I like, wonder it, it really if... Does. Do you think... I mean, we don't know here, and obviously speculation, but you, because what you just, what you were saying, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. There's no way. I know Slasher wasn't playing that great in the beginning of the year, but from what I've seen him playing in eights and everything, he, he looks like he's like good He again. was also deeply unhappy yeah. with online and yeah. said that a lot. That's true. But like, has there not been any teams you guys think that have reached out to him? Or do you think it's him because... You know, I'm not counting a, another man's pockets, but he's very comfortable. Getting paid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, do you think it's on him? Where he just is like, uh, I don't know if I want to join you guys because you're not like a contender. And mm -hmm. I would have to, you know, end my contract and do that. But cause I feel like Minnesota has had to have asked him. I feel like Austin is a competitor. And... Obviously, like you said, we don't want to count his pockets, but he's getting paid. But I feel like at this point, at this point, he might be willing to take some sort of cut. I mean, he's probably paid out most of his contract anyways. Yeah. And it's not a good thing to be out of competition for this long, like no matter what. Mm -hmm. When it comes to getting his next deal, right? Like this guy hasn't played and his last two seasons haven't been that great. Like, why would you want to come back on on that? You, you know end I mean? up like Lou all day. Exactly. Like, for real, though, you're right. And it's like, but he has such upside. If you're a team that's struggling, why wouldn't you give it a shot in the short term? If you're struggling anyways, and the other outcome is maybe you place a, a slot higher. Maybe you get sixth instead of eighth because you made a late team change and team chemistry you just didn't work out. So what? In the long run, so what? You got sixth and not eighth. Like, why would you not give your chance, your team the chance to have that kind of mm -hmm. firepower added to your team. And you know, like, you know, Austin and Preston played together in the past and they were yeah. really well together. They were on a top team together. Mm -hmm. Why would you not? And I feel like Minnesota is the only team of those that one has the money to pull that off and two hasn't done a lot so that they should they should be OK making some sort of financial investment into their team. Whereas mm -hmm. uh, LA Thieves, on the other hand, has done. I feel like they've been spending right just to even enter into the cdl and then to pick up that team in particular and then to go out and buy hook like they've been spending so they might be a little bit more hesitant hesitant to drop a bag on on another move mm -hmm. maybe minnesota is that team to do it and obviously florida would be the other team in the slot but they don't really need to it wouldn't make sense for them and it, i'll tell you what so i mean that would be the only one player move that i could see being made it'll be interesting because I, like we said, I don't know when the roster lock is, the deadline. If it is like how it was last year and got a Rex got dropped right before champs. We still have time, especially because we have the first land in a while coming up that I wouldn't put it past any team necessarily. If, if you go and you look really bad at this land, there could be and and the roster lock isn't until like right before champs i think there is potential to still see some movement within the top eight like team team changing wise i get it i, get, I mean unfortunately and maybe even unfairly a lot of people are on land for their first time or a lot of people are in high pressure situations for the first time if they do go and shit the sheets like Celium did like if they would go and shit the sheets you might not have the confidence to stick with it. Yep. Now, FaZe had the confidence to stick with it. And also, like I talked about before, they played matches in the studio on land. So like, okay, he got shit on, but he has reps. You don't have any more reps. It's like land back to online. So even if you do well online again, 
Then it's back to land. And do you have the confidence in him, who was doing mm -hmm. well online before he got shit on the land, to go back to doing well online and then go to land? And he obviously is going to be mentally compromised before it even starts. Like, do you have that confidence to stick with tough. whoever that person is? Gonna That's be, tough. It's exactly. going to happen to someone. It's going when you to. have proven land, like talent, real talent, just sitting out there more than ever. This has never happened before with the level of, of ability and talent that is not playing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, ah, it, it puts you in a weird spot. But anyways, hopefully yeah, for those guys, they just go out and perform like they have been online. Even if the team were to lose, you can't. You can't be blamed for your Don't own drop no point seven, even if the team loses, because you might just be on a chopper. Well, who knows, guys? A lot could happen. Slasher, could he end up in Minnesota? Could Pristini's heart help Seattle take out Optic in the coming week? And will Pac-Man learn how to give me a compliment that's not backhanded? We'll have to wait and see, guys, the final week before we get to our first ever land of the years right around the corner. Stay tuned for that and stay tuned for all of our breakdowns once it wraps up.